Hello everyone, I'm John Martinez and this is a Blender footnote. In the Full Mountain tutorial, I mentioned being unable to change the effect of the water on the rocks procedurally with the water level that I'm using in the geometry nodes. So if I were to say lower the level of the water, the water goes down, but the area that I've changed to be a little bit darker and more reflective does not. It stays where it is because it is defined manually. But this comment from Blender Pete suggested a way that I might be able to connect the water level that I have input here into the shader nodes so that I'd be able to use it and map it to that value. So let's get into this. So we need to take the group output here and what we're going to do is capture uh, attributes from this and then export them into this output so that we will then be able to refer to them with an attribute node in the shader editor. So what we're going to do is take a capture attribute, plug that in there. It has to be at the end of your node tree. It can't be anywhere prior to this join geometry. So what we're going to do is change the data type from float into vector, because what we're going to be doing is using a position attribute. And what this allows us to do is it takes the geometry and says, oh, well, here's the, pos the position of each one. And we're going to the position of each point, and we're going to output it right here with this attribute output. We're going to plug this into the geometry nodes output, and the position is uh, automatically changing this output into a vector since it's taking a vector and then it just reads it automatically. You don't need to worry about changing that at all. Then what we're going to do is take our group input, which you can use any of the ones that you've used before, uh, and then take the water level all the way over there, but that gets a bit messy. And I, I personally prefer just to take our water level from a new group input and put it right there. And as you can see, again, it creates a new output here and over here. And this one again is automatically detected as a float value. So we don't need to worry about changing that. So what this is doing is it's taking our position of each of each point along here from our geometry that it's detecting outputting an attribute into there, and then we're taking our water level and again, passing it through all the geometry nodes so that we can then access it using this output attribute, which let's go ahead and name this because we need to name both of these attributes. And as you can see, when we do that, it creates a column over here for our level, which is going to be the same for every single point because it's just a value that's not necessarily mapped to any given point. We'll go ahead and also create a, an attribute name for this one, which we can go ahead and name position vector. And you can see it creates another attribute right there that it allows us to be able to access all of these, all of these attributes outside of our geometry nodes. So now that we have this all set up, let's go on over to our shader editor. Now that we're over in our shader editor, we can go ahead and start putting in our attributes that we've created. So what we're going to do is create an attribute node. And within this attribute node, we'll go ahead and reference the position vector attribute. It's very important that you spell this exactly the same way you spelled it over here because it won't work otherwise. So what this does is it now takes this position vector attribute that we've created and it allows us to use that position vector within the shader. So what we're going to use this for is creating texture coordinates that we can use and map to the water level, which we are also going to take from the geometry nodes. So if we look at the texture coordinates that are automatically generated from this, you can see that, well, this is what it looks like. But if we take our texture coordinates that we're getting from our geometry nodes, it looks quite different. It's actually centered on, on the center of the object. And this is very important because what that allows us to do is by taking our attribute of our level, our water level, then all of the stuff that we've done to create the water, that is create this plane that we have and determine its height, everything that we have in there it's within the position vector that is defined that in the geometry nodes, which as we've seen is different from the position vector that 
just naturally comes with the with the shader editor. It's, so that way we can take all of the operations that we do to create our water level and just replicate them over here and use them in the shader editor. And what what we're going to do is actually really similar to to what we did before with our original setup where it's not mapped to the to the geometry nodes. In fact, we're just going to take our nodes that we have here, we're going to duplicate them and move them down below down here. So we'll go ahead and take our vector that we have this this color up here. We're going to take that Put that into our vector. It's essentially the same as, as if we had taken it from here, but just using a different vector this time. We're going to map it into there, and then if we look at our color ramp, you can see it's very similar to what we did before. It's not at the right level though. It's This one is the one that we have uh, originally that's manually set to where we want it to go, so we know exactly where it's going to be, but this one right now it it's not in the right spot we can try moving it down a little bit you see it's a bit too high so let's just take our black point and move it down but you can see it doesn't it doesn't get it to where we need it to be it needs to be at the same level as our water right here it's not even close that is where our water level attribute comes into play what we're going to do is separate xyz we're going to take that and plug it into there. And then we're going to plug in our X into the location. And as you can see, that messes it up and actually makes it go higher than it was before. So what we need to do is actually uh, put in a math node right there and multiply that math by, or multiply that number by negative one and as you can see that now puts the black level exactly at the same level as the water so what we can do is if we move the water up or down the the water or the black level the mask moves with it it is currently linked to this water level that we have affecting our geometry it is now also affecting our shader as well. So that means that we can take this color and replace the color ramp that we had before, replace that with this one. So that one is no longer needed, no longer useful for us. And now this, the white point on here, again acts essentially like a fader, uh, determining how smooth you want your transition from dark and shiny to regular rocks. Then we are essentially going to do the same thing with do the same thing with this one for the rough map. So we'll go ahead and take this, move it all the way down because that puts it right at the water level. Then we will copy the values that we have from here because those aren't and that's not from black to white. It's from a little bit a little bit above black to a little bit below white. So we'll just copy and paste both of those and put those into our roughness. And now that is all done. It has now been replaced. If we move back over to our BSDF, you can see that it is now procedurally mapped to where our uh, water level is. So we'll go ahead and change the smooth or move that down a little bit. And there we go. You can adjust the adjust the fade how you want it, change whatever parameter you want to, and it is now linked as well. So this has been a blender footnote. If I have any corrections or additions to make to any future videos or any ones that I have already made, uh, this will be a continuing ongoing series. This has been Learn Together Filmmaking. I'm John Martinez. See you in the next video.